What are we working on here? Oh, we're in the transmission. You select the transmission. No yeah. big deal. That's why I couldn't find a data pid. I'm like, why can't I find a data pid for the uh, for the? Um, it wouldn't let me scan codes unless I clicked on any of those things. No, that's okay. Uh, future reference, we want to go engine codes, not transmission. Well, I clicked on engine and I didn't see an option to. Well, it said Cal Then it said California emission or federal. That's where you come back out here, Caleb. It says yeah. a lot of people think, oh, you know, we're not in California, so. You know, it is, this is a California mission vehicle. Some behind the scenes footage here, guys. Uh, welcome to my channel. I am Paul Danner, uh, AKA Scanner Danner, as my students call me at Rosedale Tech. I have my son Caleb with me who's working the camera. We're dealing with a Dodge uh, Dakota that's a no start. And uh, what I had Caleb do in between vehicles here is connect the scan tool and get me codes and just get a preliminary, see what we're doing, where we're going. And uh, that's what we were just talking about. So anyway, we do have a fault code here on this vehicle. I'll just show you the code right now. Uh, it is a P0340. And that is a no cam signal at PCM. So we have a no start. We haven't done anything else other than read the fault codes we have a cam signal fault, definitely focused on that. And uh, we also have an EVAP small leak, EVAP system small leak. We are not addressing that code. We are only worried about our no start. So the what I was doing it, while cam, uh, Caleb was setting up the camera was I was looking for my cam and crank data PIDs on the scan tool and I couldn't find them. I had a, an RPM only and I was just surprised at how little the data PIDs I had. That's because we were in the transmission side of the engine computer or PCM, not the engine side. So there's what we want right here is our cam and crank count. So let's, let's customize this. I just want RPM, cam and crank really the only PIDs that I care about at the moment and uh, let me go in and crank this oh. it's not good when it gives you a no calm during a crank come on Interesting, it has RPM, cam, and crank counts. I remember, just have a history here that I, I smell fuel too. I smell raw gas. Uh, I was just thinking about false cam codes. I just had a memory of a long crank time. If you crank an engine over for a long period of time, you can end up with a false code. Um, no, that was an electronic spark timing code on GM. I just found it interesting that I had RPM, cam, and crank counts on the scan tool. We may want to go in another direction here. Uh, let's see if the troubleshooter helps me with this code. I'm just thinking about, do I have a possibility here of a false P0340? And maybe we have no fuel pressure or something like that, although we did smell gasoline there, which changes things a little bit, but let me go to the troubleshooter and get a tip on this code. Code sets when at least five seconds have elapsed or 2.5 engine revolutions have elapsed with crank signal present with no cam signal. Monitor during engine cranking after 32 crank position signals. Yeah, this is just all related to the cam sensor itself. So let's uh, let's attack this now and find out what we're missing. I'm gonna start with Spark, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, peeps. So I'm just using a little simple Spark tester here that will allow us to maybe see a little bit better what's going on. I don't like this setup here. My preference would be to use an incandescent test light, have somebody crank it for me, but I'm trying to get you guys the best visual here. So I'm taking the coil wire off of the distributor cap, which is all crusty looking on the cap. 
Not that that is our problem, but just making an observation there. And you need to tell me if I have spark when I crank it, okay? Right. Yep. I do? Yep. Really? Yeah. I'm shocked. Yep. See, that's making me lean more toward this might be a false code. Okay, let me uh, open this up here. You know what it could be is someone was messing around too. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm opening my air gap. What I want to know is can it still jump the gap? I have it set now for, yeah, I don't know, roughly uh, about 20,000 kV. It should still jump that gap. Tell me if it does. Yep. Nice and consistent, strong looking spark, Caleb. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to crank it for me so I can, sure. I can look? All right, ready? Yeah. All right, yeah, sweet. Okay, perfect. Good lesson on fault codes it can be misleading. Could have been someone in here playing around. So what I'm gonna do now, just because I wanna know if this code is coming back, I don't think it is. The fact that we have spark, is a good indicator that uh, we do not have a cam sensor fault. Although I think this system can run without the cam sensor, I think. I'm not totally sure offhand. Um, what I, uh, I'm thinking of multiple things right now. One, I wanna clear the code, see if this code comes back. Two, I also need to check spark in another location. Remember I said the cap looked pretty crusty. You guys didn't see it, but I didn't like the way that looked. Just cause we have good spark going into the distributor cap doesn't mean we have good spark coming out. So we wanna double check spark in another location. But what I wanna do first, is uh, go back to my codes and I'm gonna clear these. Then I'm going to re reread them, no codes present. And now I'm gonna crank it again and see if we can make this code reset. Yeah, no codes. See, that makes me think someone was in here playing around. This is one of my friend, Pete Latour. We're at Latour's Auto. Uh, it's a family member's car. So Pete being a mechanic, and there's a lot of mechanics in the Latour family, very good chance that someone was in here unplugging stuff and set that code and uh, kind of put us on the wrong path there for a minute. That's what I'm thinking right now, that this is not a cam sensor fault. Let me, let me crank it again. Yeah, no, no one trip failures, which is uh, single trip detection and no matured codes either. So um, we're gonna move away from a cam sensor fault for a couple reasons. One, we had cam data parameters on the scan tool. I had cam shaft position sensor counts on the scan tool. Now sometimes scan tool can lie to us and give us uh, substituted values and, and that would, would have potentially been an explanation for why we had cam signal cam signals occurring with a potential faulty cam sensor does not look like that's the case here um, let's just continue on with with what we're missing it, this is maybe going to be a um, not so much scan tool related as it's going to be tests under the hood so uh, next step for spark is I want to make sure that my spark is also making it to a spark plug that we do not have a bad cap or rotor. This is standard no spark diagnosis when you have a distributor. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm pulling this spark plug wire off of my number one cylinder and we're gonna do the same spark test and we're gonna crank it over. I'm gonna have Caleb crank it cause I wanna see it. Well, no, you know what? You stay where you're at, Caleb. Be my visual guy cause you need to learn this stuff too. And then I wanna see it as well. And so, to, so we're all clear. We have spark that's going in the distributor cap over there, goes in the rotor, and then comes out of a spark plug wire, and that's where I'm attached now. I'm on cylinder number one. We had good spark going in. We're looking for spark coming out. For those of you that are new to this, and for my son, this is going to be less consistent than the coil, because the coil wire 
fires all six cylinders where the number one spark plug wire is only firing the number one cylinder. So it's gonna be less frequent as I crank this, okay? All right, cranking it. There's spark? Yeah, I saw spark. All right, I want to see it. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely there. All right, so we have spark. Uh, next step is to check for fuel. We did have a fuel smell. Both Caleb and I smelled fuel when we were cranking that. And um, that suggests fuel, but not always the case um, so we can check injection pulse next or we can go fuel pressure either one is very simple um, I think just given the ease of testing injection pulse we're right here is let's just do that real quick unplug one of these injectors and we'll grab my test light working out of the Jeep this week because my oldest son's friend decided to rear end somebody in my truck on the way back from the beach. And it's being repaired right now by my friends at Arlington Auto on Banksville Road. So a little plug for Arlington Auto. They had uh, some horrible Google reviews. I, when I was Googling the, to get there the other day for my son, Arlington, you need to fix those reviews, man. Because these guys, those reviews were crap. I just they're just not up on technology as far as the Google goes I don't even think they knew they were there anyway Arlington Auto great people um, okay so test I'm doing test light to battery positive and what I'm looking for is a ground on this fuel injector it's gonna be a momentary ground always want to make sure our light lights we're gonna go over to here and back probe this injector connector. Caleb, you know this test. I wanna know, does that bulb flicker when I crank it? it? Should, yeah. Yes, it should. So you know the test, you know what to look for. Let me know what we see, okay? It's gonna be probably dim. Cranking it over. All right, so I trust my son. He's done this with me a few times now, and that means we have injection pulse. While we're here, let's do one other thing. Let's make sure that our ASD circuit is alive. That's our auto shutdown relay circuit, ASD auto shutdown. And that would be the feed to my fuel injectors, which is on this side, comes from the ASD circuit. And when I crank this over, that light should light and be steady the whole time. So let me know what you see here, Caleb. Ready? Yep. What do we got? Nothing. Really? Yeah. Nah. Nothing. So nothing means either my test light ground is bad or I'm not making contact with that or we actually have an ASD circuit problem. So my test light ground is good. Let's go back to that again. I might not have been making contact. First thing that should do is when I turn the key on, if I shut the key off and wait, and then turn the key on, we should get about a two second pulse of power. Yep. We did? Yeah. And then when I crank it, it should come back. Yeah. Okay, so what that means then is I was just making bad contact. Yeah. That is a good power feed to my injectors. That also means that my ASD relay circuit is active and that auto shutdown relay circuit powers up the injectors, the ignition coil, the fuel pump. In fact, just the fact that we had spark says the ASD circuit was working. So that test wasn't even needed. Apologize for that. All right, injection pulse, spark, truck's not starting. Uh, false code, let's scan that one more time. Sometimes it takes multiple tries to make a fault code come back. They don't always come back immediately. Let's reread those codes again. Yeah, there's no codes present. So now we're fuel pressure. Let me grab my fuel pressure gauge. So we smelled gasoline when we cranked it, but that doesn't tell you everything. When I just connected to this service port, I did not get any gasoline come out at all, which is a suggestion that we don't have any fuel pressure. In fact, that's what I think is going on here. 
we may actually have a fuel pump issue here. So focus on the gauge, Caleb. I'm not sure the spec offhand, 30, 40, 50 PSI, somewhere in that range we should be. I'm gonna crank it. Nothing. Nothing. All right, so we have a pump issue. Now there's some other quick and dirty ways you can verify that we have a fuel problem and that's spray a fuel source into the intake, see if the vehicle starts. So for you guys that are working maybe with not the same tools as me, and that's a test I've used many times. It's a valid test, spray a fuel source, see what happens, but we, we don't have fuel pressure. So now we are dealing with our pump circuit, multiple, multiple ways to address a fuel pump circuit. I think one of them for me is gonna be right here at the relay, being that we're outside. I'm over here, Caleb, let's get a shot of our fuel pump relay. Fuel pump relay of our on our box is here, okay? So now to get a perspective of this, front of the truck is that way. That's my battery. This is electronic EBL relay, which is missing. Junction, this one here, or is it? Right there. Yeah, it's, it's missing. Why is the fuel pump relay missing? The fuel pump relay is missing. I can't, did somebody set us up here? What is going on? Or is that maybe a spare and I'm reading this wrong? Rear wiper. No, that should be this, but the box looks weird. What does that look like that? It's like everything's backwards. You know what I mean? Like looking at that, here's your fuses. So there's a there's a 20 amp, there's a 40 amp, those are right. 20 and a 30. So I'm following down this line. Mm -hmm. And then I have my smaller fuses here, but then they, here's my relay, but they show the relay part. So that means either that's my fuel pump relay or that's the fuel pump relay and it's missing. I'm pretty sure that's the fuel pump relay. I think you're right. I, Cause look at it. Like the this would be the, yeah. And this is the engine relay here. And this is the fan relay here. It's just weird how they have this set up. It's missing. I'm, I'm going to take, all right, if that's the case, starter, spare, trans, okay. If I take this relay out, that's the starter relay. I shouldn't be able to crank this right now. Just experiment here. Yep, yep. The fuel pump relay is not in this car. Why? Somebody's messing with this guy. All right, so let's take the, um, Let's take the fog lamp relay out and move it to the fuel pump. <laughs> that can't be right. Does this have fog lamps? Would you call these fog lamps? These, yeah, I guess so, huh? At some point in time, that was a fog lamp. All right, trying to start it. No fuel pressure still? Where's your gauge at? Here it is. You moved it. All right, try again. Obviously not. Then, yeah, there was no fuel pressure. Something's not right here, Caleb. No pressure? No. Nah. So maybe someone actually pulled the relay out and forgot to put it back in? Okay, now I'm concerned if we're on the right circuit, but um, I have a relay that's missing. I feel like, not I feel like, someone was here playing around and we still have an issue. That's, that makes me feel better. At least it's not a missing relay. If that was the case, what kind of video would this be? The case of a missing relay. I guess I could have still posted it. Uh, let me grab my relay tester. Did I bring it? I might not have brought it because I don't have my truck we don't need it but i want my u activate relay tool and i don't know if i have it
Nope. I don't have it. We're working old school today. All right. We have some abilities here that a bi-directional scan tool gives us. That's the way I'm going. Um, there are ways we can do it without it, but if I have one, why would I do it any other way? When it comes to relay circuits, you guys have heard me say this many times that we want to make sure we have two power feeds. So on this relay and on these pins, trans relay spare, all right. I want two power feeds, so two of these pins should be hot. If this really is my fuel pump relay, all right. So there's my two power feeds, control and load. And I don't know which is which at the moment. Um, I'm gonna take this fog lamp relay out again. And I know that those two are my, f are my feed so I'm just gonna back probe this guy and this guy all right that's control and then that one's going to the fuel pump okay so um, what I did is I'm um, activating this is a this is control side power and this is control side actually this could be control side power Either way, this is control side ground on that corner because I can make that relay turn on with my test light. Just touching on that pin, you can hear it. And then that means that this pin here is for my pump circuit itself. And man, I really need that tool right now. I actually might go get it because I need to use a jumper and an amp probe to measure my pump current. I want to measure fuel pump current right now because I really don't want to crawl underneath it if I don't have to. At least I've identified what pin it is. Let me see what I have and see what we can do to modify what we're doing. All right, boys and girls, do not do this wrong. If you jump the wrong pins on a relay like this, you will fry the engine computer and it will never run the fuel pump again ever all right so uh, no i won't do it wrong i have in the past this is the one area where i've smoked two computers in the years that i've been doing this it's been a long time let me stop talking for a second because i need to think hold on so this is 30 at the bottom 87 at the top so that's load okay got it so down here for a second, this is my load side power feed right here, okay? This is my load side switch that goes to my fuel pump. This is control side power feed, and this is control side ground that is grounded by the engine computer whenever um, the fuel pump relay circuit is turned on. So the computer grounds that pin, which makes a magnetic field on the coil, and then it attaches this pin to this pin. So what I'm gonna do, before I check the computer's control, because I haven't done that yet. Nope, change my mind. I'm gonna check the computer's control first, just because we're here. I wanna be clear that I am not putting this test light in this pin and spreading the terminal. I'm putting it next to the pin, okay? Laying it next to it. Connecting my polarity, back up for a second, Caleb. Connecting my test light polarity to battery positive, that is a circuit that is ground side switched. So when I turn the key on or crank it, that light should light. Computer's grounding the circuit is what that means. So watch it. I'll turn the key off first. And then I'll turn the key on. We should get a momentary power feed, just like that ASD relay check we did. Nothing. Nothing. Huh? Cranking it over? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. So I'm shocked. So is this possibly not the fuel pump relay circuit that I'm on? Okay. B battery positive. That should have... That should have lit. Hmm. Why is it not? What am I doing wrong? 
before I jump the pump circuit, well, I can do that too. Let's go. Load side feed is that one. And this is my, that should be my pump circuit. Right now I have nothing there. So for my pump to be, this could be bad, Caleb. This could be bad from a standpoint of all this needed was maybe a fuel pump and someone was in here and did some testing and already cooked our engine computer driver. Because that test, when I did that pin, that should have that should have that should have worked i still have a question this might not be the fuel pump circuit I, I might be barking up the wrong tree and it might actually be over here okay i, I before i go any further i want to bi-directionally turn my fuel pump relay on i'm going to use the scan tool to do it go to functional tests fuel pressure test hit continue and I'm going to turn my fuel pump on and off here. Don't worry about the data, just the top here. Ah. So the other, I do hear a relay clicking, but the thing about Chrysler's is the auto shutdown and fuel pump relays are on the same circuit. This diagram is so screwed up. Engine relay, rad fan relay. What the? That's this one. This is my engine relay right here. So if I take that one out, this is my auto shutdown. Yeah, no sound at all. So just so we're clear, this is unusual. The setup on Chrysler's, they use one driver that controls both the auto shutdown and the fuel pump relay. And um, that kind of tells me my computer's okay. The fact that my ASD relay is still working. But when I do that, when I do this test, if this is my fuel pump relay circuit, this pin right here should be being grounded. It is not. I, I still wanna make sure I'm on the same circuit. So two over, so this should be fuel pump. Oh, somebody might've, this says spare. Did somebody put, what? I'm reading this backwards, Caleb. I'm not on the fuel pump relay circuit. Seriously, I'm not. I've been messing with the fog lights the whole time. The relay that I pulled out, because wasn't this relay over here, Caleb? Was, uh, wasn't this relay? Yeah, re yeah. And then it was missing. We're reading this backwards because I did have the starter one correct. I pulled that one. This is my fuel pump relay. I was messing with the fog light circuit. Here, just back up. Look at my fog lights down here. These guys here and here, just yeah. from a backed up view. I'm gonna jump this circuit again. Tell me if my fog lights come on. Cause I'm pretty sure they're going to. I mean, that is if those bulbs are any good. The fact that somebody pulled the relay out of there. Nothing? Nothing. That's where I'm pretty sure we're messing with the fog light circuit. Um, how else can I prove it to you? If I still identified the correct control circuit, we didn't do any of that wrong. I should be able to make this light. If I'm messing with the fog light circuit, I should be able to make that light light by turning the fog light switch on inside. There is no fog light switch. Was this aftermarket? Just turning your headlights on. Okay, 
I, I, I don't care. I'm moving away from this circuit. This should be my fuel pump. This one. This should be the fuel pump. I'm, I'm pretty sure. And that would make this same pin. Let's check for our two power feeds first. Control and load side powers are there. And then switching my, my test light now to battery positive again. This one should go to the pump. This one should be the computer control pin. And if I turn my pump on bi-directionally, that light should light. Stupid box diagrams. So that's what we want. Computer is controlling that. Okay, kind of weird and the delay of that. But we've identified the correct relay. We didn't have a missing relay. There's another tip for us here is test light connected to battery positive. When I touch a ground, it lights. This is the pin here that goes to the fuel pump. And if this fuel pump was good and there was continuity through the brushes, that test light would be lighting right now. The fact that it's not is telling me I have an open. So a current measurement isn't going to help us here. We have an open pump circuit. And I can prove it to you too, because what I can do is jump that, staying away from that computer controlled wire. I definitely wanna stay away from this pin right here. The one the computer's controlling, if I jump this wire to that right now and happen to crank the engine over, I would cook the computer, cook it. So this circuit that is being grounded, let me move my hand out of the way so you can see. That circuit that's, again, I'm not stuffing this in there, I'm putting it next to the pin. That circuit, when I turn the driver on, see it delayed, but it, it's lighting that. That's my computer's control pin. It's a ground side switch circuit. If I touch this jumper that's connected to a battery power, load side power to that pin, I'll cook the computer. I'm jumping it to where it needs to go, which is my fuel pump. Come over here so you can see. I want you to look closely. If this circuit had current flow, as soon as I connected it, we would be seeing an arcing right there. And we're not. So what that means, Caleb, is there's no reason to connect my amp probe and get a current measurement. There isn't current. It's an open circuit. It's an open circuit. Okay, so what I wanna do now is with the pump circuit jumped and my gauge connected, I'll keep Caleb up here and he can be focused on the fuel pressure gauge. I'm gonna go underneath and beat on the fuel tank, see if we can make this fuel pump turn on. If we can, we're done. Nothing, huh? No. Okay. Well, we're in luck. We can get to the wiring back here, Caleb, before we call this fuel pump. So right now the pump circuit's active. I wanna go back there and I wanna check power and ground to my pump with this circuit loaded. I have it loaded, I have it jumped. We can also use the scan tool to do it. Um, I don't know that that's really necessary, it's not. We can stay really with the test light too. Or we can use the multimeter. Um, what I really need to make sure of though, because this is rusty, is that we have a good ground with whatever test we use. Let's, um, let's go with scan tool. Um, get your tripod, come back here, see what we can do. Just so you get an idea where we are in a gravel parking lot, working in the back here, 
at least we have access to the wiring. We're going to check power and ground real quick back here at the pump. Again, showed an open up front, no current flow, uh, both with the arcing of my jumper and our test light that was never lighting connected to battery positive. What that should have been doing is traveling down the power wire into the pump motor in the positive brush of the pump through the winding of the pump motor on its way out to ground that would have lit my test light and the reason it would have done that is the pump is very very low ohm circuit and my test light is very high ohm it should have absolutely lit my test light um, we were suspecting it open but just to be sure we're going to do some checks back here difficult though on a rusty frame so i'll try going to this stud Hopefully that's a good connection. You good? Uh, I think so, you're just probing those wires. Yeah. The first one's gonna be, I'm gonna do that green and black wire. Let me get set up on my scope. Just using my, just using my graphing multimeter for this. Actually, what we could do, there's really no reason to look at the graph. Let's let's use our digital multimeter. Make this nice and big for everyone to see. Some big, big numbers on the screen. All right, we'll go green wire first. Twelve point two volts. And what I'm going to do now is disconnect my jumper. And what did that voltage drop to, Caleb? Uh, yeah, it's dropping down to three, two volts. All right, cool. So that is absolutely my power feed to my fuel pump. So that is a good feed all the way down to here, right? And that's right at the connector itself. And then the blue white, I believe, is for the sending unit. So I have two black wires I need to check. We're gonna check both of those because I'm not sure which one is the sending unit ground and which one is my pump ground. Just, I just do not wanna see high voltage on either one of these. There's 0 0.01 on that one. Totally fine with that. Remember, our pump's not running at all. If this was a bad ground wire, we're gonna read 12 volts on this ground. Here's the second ground wire. I got zero. And I, I suspect that the, the zero volt reading one is my pump ground because what we have is an open brush contact here. So this is just a faulty fuel pump. We can tell Pete with 100% certainty that this needs a pump. Now, some of you guys are looking at this zero volt signal and maybe you're thinking, well, that's not a good test on the ground because it's not loaded. You would be correct. That ground is not loaded right now. However, the tests we've done prove 100% this needs a pump. Now, is it possible that we could have an open in the pump winding or brush contact and have an open ground at the same time on the fuel tank? Guys, it does not happen. It doesn't happen. I don't need to load this ground. I don't need to. Um, I was just thinking if, if some of you want me to do that, uh, or uh, let me restate that. If some of you wanted or felt the need to load that ground, then by all means, grab a test light, connect a battery positive, come back here, put a, at least a little bit of a load on the ground. Guys, it's not necessary. This is done. This is a faulty fuel pump. No question about it. I really want to beat on it some more, Caleb. I do. I'm going to try. I'm going to kick it this time. Because it is, what I'm doing by, by kicking on it, is I am trying to restore the contact of the brushes. I can't, I can't kick it harder than I could punch it. Not enough room. Let me try hitting it again.
No luck. Now I got rust and crap all over my face. If I was stuck out in the middle of nowhere, I'd be beating on that thing until I make that pump turn on. Sometimes they never turn back on, they just get ruined. But I'll tell you what I'll do for you guys. I'll have Pete put in a, a new pump and I'll just get you an after reading of fuel pressure. Call this a wrap, but we're done. There's no other checks we need to do. Um, I can actually show you, I can show you one more just because we can. I'm gonna go back to my feed circuit. So we're reading 12 volts. I'm just gonna pull my jumper out. See that voltage is dropping. Some of you are thinking, why is the voltage dropping slowly? Well, there's nowhere for it to go. So I've just trapped this energy in there. And with an open, it's kind of dissipating. Um, so any of you guys that have been following my classroom lectures, I talk about this with the the uh, pull-up circuit design and the internal ground of the computer and why there is one. I've talked about this. It's to make a nice clean on-off signal. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. It'd be in cha my chapter two material. Anyway, I'm putting the relay back in. And now we have zero volts on this wire. But what I'm gonna do now is bi-directionally turn this pump on. So, turning that pump circuit on, back to my scope multimeter, and there you go, you got 12 volts, bi-directionally turning this relay on. So that just kind of gives you guys a good overview of the relay, the activity there, the computer, the driver, all of that's good. 12 volts on this pump circuit, bad fuel pump. Um, you know, it's really not even necessary. I, don't, I, don't, I said I was gonna get you guys in on this when the new pumps installed um, it's really not necessary this is a faulty fuel pump all day long every day and uh, you know there was an evap leak code on this but I'm not doing an evap test but if it's me I'm working in the field I might want to do something with this evap leak before I drop the tank that's not what we're doing here I'm not doing that out here in the parking lot so what I want to do here is a little lesson for my son, Caleb, and I want to include you guys in on this too. Um, the first thing I want to cover, Caleb, is these four pins down here. So get a shot down here with me. Okay, if you guys remember, this is hot, this was hot, this is control, and this is load. Okay, so load side feed, load side fuel pump, uh, control side feed, um, and control side ground. Okay, so first thing I'll do, we're just using this crappy cardboard here. We'll just draw these four pins, okay? This one goes to battery positive, and this is our load feed, okay? This one goes to battery positive. This is my control feed. Now, I don't know which one's ignition or battery feed. It does not matter for what we're doing right now. This one I called my um, computer this is my computer controlled computer controlled ground okay this goes to my engine computer I'll just draw it as a switch this is inside of the PCM which stands for powertrain control module and it's a switch that closes to ground it's just a transistor electronic switch but it's a switch that goes to ground and then this one is going to my fuel pump, okay? My FP. And we'll draw that more here in a minute. Now, internal to this relay, what we would have is you'd have a coil of wire that would be between these two guys, okay? And between these two guys, what we would have is a switch. Okay, kind of a crappy picture of a relay, but essentially what's happening here, Caleb, is power comes this way, runs through a coil of wire that's, that's gonna make a magnetic field. And when this magnetic field um, is created, it pulls the switch closed. Okay, so they call this control. What controls that is the engine computer. Now that's what I was using my scan tool, and I was commanding that to work with my scan tool. 
right? I was telling the computer, turn that on. And what we were doing is we were taking a test light here to battery positive, And we were letting that light light telling us our computer was good. That's what told us we were on the wrong relay when we did the fog light. Cause I was telling the computer to turn the, the circuit on, but I was actually on the fog light circuit. So that's why it was never lighting. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know, how's the ASD relay circuit working when they share the same ground. And by that I'm saying internal, right? This also controls the ASD. So when the fuel pump turns on, so does the ASD relay. And it's another relay that you have basically like I have drawn here. So we checked our, um, our two power feeds this way. We had our test light connected to ground here. We had our test light connected to ground here, verified this was good, verified this was good, switched our test light polarity to battery positive, took the scan tool, commanded this to turn on, verified this was good. And then the last step I did up here is I took my test light to battery positive again, and I said what? You remember, Caleb? What did I say about why didn't that light? Now you don't know anything about it, so I don't expect you to, to know, but I said that that says our fuel pump is open because inside of the pump, what, what you'd have is you'd have a positive brush and then you'd have a negative brush and this brush would go to ground and this would ride on a segment of the motor that's called a commutator segment commutator bars and what's in between this essentially is a coil of wire right this fuel pump there's permanent magnets here permanent magnet here and when we send power here and ground here we're, we're making an electromagnet that opposes the permanent magnets and that's what makes it spin that's your motor okay so what i said was the reason i knew we had an open in here this test light connected this way should have sent power through my test light bulb on its way into that pin down this way and into the fuel pump motor through the winding back through the ground and it should have lit my test light and it did not so this was a failed test so where are we going now everything from this side over this is all good everything on that side of the line is all good where are we going that way it's our only option. So last step being that my test light didn't light here is I want to check my pump powers and grounds, right? I said, check my powers, check my grounds. I always talk about that. Now to do that, rather than having the, this circuit working, I don't need any of this anymore. I just took a jumper wire from here and I ran, I'll make this a thick line just so you can see it. I ran a jumper wire between the load side feed and the fuel pump circuit, forcing current flow or forcing voltage to be in here all the time, independent of the computer and the controls. I bypassed the relay because I wanna do load power and ground tests down here. So I got as close to the fuel pump as I could. I connected my voltmeter to ground and I read 12 volts on the feed right here. So what's that tell me about this wire between the relay, which is up here, right? And runs through the body of the car down the frame. What's that tell me about my load side wire from here, the relay to the pump? It's good. I got 12 volts. If this was open, I'd have 12 in here, 12, 12, 12, but it'd be zero here, right where the open is, okay? All right, so I had 12 here, so that tells me my wire is good all the way down. The next step was to check the ground, and my ground read zero volts. If this ground was open here, that 12 volts would enter the, the winding of the pump. There would be no voltage drop because there's no current flow, and it would come out here, and it would read 12 volts on the pump ground. That's not what we had. We had zero telling us we do not have an open in the ground wire causing our issue. Where is our open? We have 12 coming in, zero coming out. That means our open is in the pump motor itself. That's the only possible cause for where we are. Okay guys, I know some of you are thinking that it is possible that we could have a wiring problem still because the pump 
motor is open and we're not loading the circuit. You'd be correct. The tests that I did were unloaded circuit tests. And I've always taught my students, make sure the circuit's loaded, make sure the circuit's loaded. In this circumstance, with the pump motor being open, there is no load. But let me ask you guys this. Did we, with 100% certainty, identify an open in the pump motor winding? The answer is yes, absolutely, 100%. No current flow in this circuit with a good 12 volt feed and a zero volt reading on the ground, 100% certainty open in the pump motor itself. Now it could be something inside the tank that I can't get to, but from that connector on the pump where I was, into the tank is where our open is. If we had a high resistance problem on the feed, we would have seen low voltage on that test. If we had a high resistance problem on the ground, we would have seen high voltage on that test. We didn't have that. 100% confident here, guys, open in the pump motor. If you feel the need to load the feed and the ground independent of the pump, by all means, you can do that using an external source, maybe a, a, a test light or a headlight bulb even. I've seen guys do that. I used to do that myself, but guys, it's not necessary. Why in this application is it not necessary? Simply this. You do not have a fuel pump motor that fails at the same exact time that you have a wiring problem in the circuit. It just does not happen. Faulty fuel pump is our only cause here. Make sense? Kind of? Yeah, I mean. I mean, you're allowed to ask questions and, and I'm sure you don't even know what to ask. Now there's so much other stuff, but some of you guys right here on this channel will appreciate the little lesson on the uh, relay activity here of this circuit. Um, there's a maybe one other unanswered question as far as my ASD goes. Let me let me redraw this. This is a lesson I have in uh, chapter 15 in my text and in, in my lectures uh, on the ASD and fuel pump relay circuits on a Chrysler. So let's just do that real quick. So here's I'm going to draw this differently here. So my fuel pump relay sits here, my ASD sits here, and we'll draw this as the coil, the switch, the switch, and the coil. I drew this kind of backwards. But these guys, they may actually even run to the computer separately. We'll just draw that as positive. This is, that looks like a pumpkin face. Jack ASD, FP, these guys actually run together inside of the engine computer and they get grounded. This is a transistor symbol here. This is inside of the PCM. So there's one driver that controls both the fuel pump and ASD. And let's just simplify this diagram. The fuel pump circuit obviously goes to the fuel pump, but I believe it also it might be injectors too. The ASD would feed injectors, the ignition coil, O2 heater, alternator, field. Now the injectors might be up here on this fuel pump circuit. I'm not totally sure, but that's what they did. They separated it. And what I, what I wanted to say to you guys or what I was saying Remember when we were on the fog light circuit, I said, man, this driver, did somebody jump this and cook the driver? And then I said, no, that's not possible. Why? Because the ASD relay was still operational. The reason I knew we were on the wrong relay at that point in time, my ASD relay was working and my fuel pump relay was not. I was never on the fuel pump relay. I was on the fog light circuit. That's what told me that. So I want to be clear on that too. Pete, Pete's on camera now. We're just wrapping up here. Unfortunately, you need to drop the tank. Okay. It is a bad fuel pump. So why did we have a cam sensor fault code? Was somebody in here playing They're around? False codes, false codes. Don't let them lead you down the wrong path. Some quick, simple checks. We verified that faulty fuel pump, Pete, okay? okay. Great. Thanks for joining me, guys. We'll see you next time.